What's up, STR Nation? Welcome back to another Tuesdays with Mike and Mike. Today, we're talking about all things cleaners for your short-term rental business. And specifically, what should you ask your cleaners as part of your screening process when you're going to onboard or when you're recruiting new cleaners to your team? So as always, our main man, Mike Riley here, has put together an awesome checklist of some different questions that you can ask. And you're welcome to get a copy of that checklist. All you got to do is text resources to 978 two four two zero 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 one and we'll get you taken care of so mike you've been building and scaling uh pretty significantly especially the last few months i feel like you've just been like pumping them out so as you're building your team and adding new cleaners uh you know you're taking more time to document this process so that your team now a virtual assistant can take over and do some of this stuff for you so what are some of the questions that you are asking as part of your cleaner vetting process? Yeah, sure. So in the last, I think, four months, we've got into three different markets, three new markets. So uh, we've had to find three new cleaning teams um, in these markets. And I've probably talked to at least 10 um, out of these three markets. So I came up with a list of questions to ask um, that I've been asking, and it's loaded out pretty well. Um, what the mistake I kind of made at the beginning was the first thing I would ask is, hey, you know, how much does a cleaning cost for a three bedroom, two bath that serves eight guests for a short term rental? Like that would be my first question. That's most people's first question. And then, you know, you get a number and they say, oh, it costs 150. I'm like, oh, great. Like, that's awesome. Um, and then you kind of like, all right, I'll, I'll try them out. Let's let's get them onboarded. Um, but don't really go in depth into the questions that that need to be asked. So I put this list together. Um, the number one question before asking anything else is, are you familiar with cleaning for short-term rental business? Um, are you familiar with same-day turnovers, you know, staging for the next guests, and then being very direct and saying, how many short-term rentals do you clean currently? Um, and just let them kind of share their experience with it. And if you get a good feeling or if they share some negative experience, um, it's a it's a good just first open-ended question um, for them to answer. And also uh, you could get some referrals out of that too. Like if they're very upbeat about answering that question and they say, hey, I've got like three or four referrals that you can talk to, here's their number, like that's a good sign. Um, so that's, that's really question number one, first and foremost. Um, Question number two, how many cleaners are on your team? Um, Mike, I know you've had to ask that that's question a quite a few times. So yeah, that's a big one for me. So that was that was one um, that I added over time because what I found is <clears throat> as you start adding more units and you're looking to scale, or even if you're at one or two, if you're hiring an individual cleaner, it's great. You know, it, it's giving them a paycheck. It's helping them out. But if they get sick or if they stop calling or something happens, you don't have a plan B. So I personally like working with cleaning companies that have multiple cleaners. And so as I scaled, I didn't become a housekeeping manager. I just continued to run my business because the companies that I were working with, they were the ones dealing with all the logistics of figuring out who they were going to send to my properties today to make sure that everything got done. I wasn't having to do any of that, right? It was like I had a built-in housekeeping manager, whereas, you know, a lot of folks, when they get to a certain level, they start hiring housekeepers in-house, which you can totally do. And we've partially done that. We have four full-time housekeepers that work for one of our hotels, but we also have an on-site supervisor at that hotel that handles all the, the logistics. So I'm not dealing with it. Um, but it will make your life a lot easier is what I'm getting at is if you work with cleaning companies that have multiple cleaners so that they could send backups or they can send more than one person or whatever it is, as you continue to scale, you're not going to have to continue finding more cleaning companies. If the one that you're working with is already, you know, a two or three person shop that's looking to grow themselves. Absolutely. Question number three is what is your scheduling process entail? Like, when a new booking comes in, how do you put that on your calendar and how do you schedule it? So that's a pretty open-ended question. I've gotten a lot of different answers. I've gotten, oh, I just write it down, pen and paper. One of our cleaners here where I live 
does that and it works for her, but we started off her doing that and now we're kind of inching her into getting more used to technology um we just send automated you know texts to her every time we get a, a booking but now she's cleaning six of our units and uh it just needs to be a little bit more sophisticated we haven't had any blips so far knock on wood but now we're giving her access to smart bb hospitable and she gets to uh to view that but it's very very important uh, another one of my cleaners she's got a very detailed google calendar so you know, she pulls up her Google calendar and she sees each booking. And if it's a same day turnover, it's got a different um, terminology for it. Uh, it's a P2P for her. And so she can schedule her cleaners all through the Google calendar. Um, and, you know, it's a very efficient way to do it, but everybody kind of does it a little bit differently. Um, if you're on turnover BNB, like we um, promote very heavily, uh, that kind of takes care of it for you, uh, which leads into our next question is, Number four, how, how comfortable or are you comfortable using technology, like using apps on your phone, um, taking pictures of the rooms and um, if there's issues, you know, letting us know right away, you know, taking a picture, texting us, um, you know, during the cleaning. So how comfortable are you using technology or adding different apps um, to, you know, the task list? So. Yep. Um, number five, what is your recommendation for handling linens? So if they've got plenty of SDRs already, there's some sort of process. Like some will say, yeah, we can do it on site, you know, whatever. I prefer ne them not to do it on site for all of our listings, just because I, I want them focused on cleaning the property rather than doing the laundry or having to worry about doing the laundry. Some of my uh, washer and dryers, they don't have... Um, you know, very quick cycles. So uh, I don't want to be paying them, you know, to sit there and, and watch the towels literally dry. So um, what is the recommendation on handling linens um, and, and see what they say. Um, number six, do you have a runner service? Like, are you able to run to our property or go to our property during certain hours? Like, I'm not asking you to come at 2 a.m., but can you go to the property if there's a certain issue? Like, one time, um, well, this happened a few times, smoke alarm batteries, they were chirping and the guests weren't able to reach because they didn't have a ladder and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I call my, my cleaners and they send out their handyman um, and just kind of talk through some certain scenarios like that where they can go check it out. Also like Wi-Fi, like, you know, I had plenty of times in the past the Wi-Fi was out or the water wasn't working or, you know, there was an outlet that wasn't working um, do your cleaners have the ability to go check it out and, and see if they can help the guests since we're like for us, most of our properties are greater than three hours away. Most of ours are six hours away. So, um, hugely, hugely important. I know yours are too, Mike. Yeah. So I think some, some folks may be listening and thinking, well, that sounds like a lot more handyman work, which Yes, it kind of is, but it's it's more like the prelim work before you send the handyman. So you can do it either way. But I think, again, having them as a runner to go restock supplies for you, swap out ring batteries, um, you know, change batteries in the, th in the um, smoke detectors, all that kind of like easy stuff, you know, cleaners can do that all day long. If you set the expectations that those are some things that you're probably going to ask them to do or that you are going to ask them to do, is that going to be a problem, right? And so, you know, that's all part of the short-term rental process. Yeah, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, that leads into question number seven. Are you able to, you know, comfortable changing batteries on technology like a ring device or a smart lock or smoke detectors? Like, are you comfortable doing that? Because um, that happens, I mean, I've got 13 uh, 13 live right now that happens almost on a weekly basis. Now we've got to change a, a ring device or a smart lock, uh, battery needs to be changed. So, um, definitely need to make sure that they know how to change them as well. And that's, that's kind of on, on you to teach them too. So, um, question number eight, are you able to service amenities like hot tubs or saunas or, um, you know, any other, you know, fire pits, uh, grills, like, are you able to service those amenities too, and make sure that they're clean? And if so, do you charge extra for that? Um, that's that's huge because you don't want to have like four different contractors come over 
you know, plus your cleaners uh, to be able to service, you know, the amenities that guests come to your property for. When you say service, Mike, are you talking about just like putting in like cleaning chemicals and things like that? Yeah, I don't mean like maintenance services. I mean like just putting in the right chemicals, making sure they're clean. Um, yeah. And, you know, functional. So. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, number nine and getting into some of like the grittier details, like what cleaning supplies do you need us to supply or us to provide? Do you provide all the cleaning supplies? Um, that'll help us just kind of know what we need to keep in stock and what they need to keep in stock and things like that. It also goes into some of the costs too. So. Slash toiletries. I know um, like my Florida cleaner charges us a lot more than any other market. I think it's just going right down there because it's a tourist market, but they include the toiletries and stuff like that. So the soaps yeah. and shampoos and all that jazz. Yeah. And that's huge. If you can, that's one actually I didn't, didn't have on here. Like, do you supply toiletries? Can you supply toiletries? Little soaps, like the little bottles or how they do that? What are the logistics for that? And that kind of leads into question number 10 is, are you able to pick up supplies for us or can we ship supplies to your home and you stock the supply closet for us? Um, yeah, that's so. huge. Like I rely so much on my cleaners for that. It's, even for the local stuff, like I still don't do it even for the local stuff, like well, the, the cleaners do it and it just makes life so much easier. So, you know, we've gotten to the point in our relationship with them that they'll just go grab it and they'll just send us a picture of the receipt and just we'll just reimburse them through Venmo or different options, whatever you're going to use. But um, at the beginning, like having that in place where like they're filling out your supply sheets for you, sending them to you, letting you know, hey, we're getting low on these items. Cool. You can order it to the local Target, Walmart, Amazon it to their house, whatever. Let them restock it for you. And again, that's part of being a short term rental cleaner is being part of your team. And you can compensate them for that. You know, if they got to go to the store and back, that's fine. You can pay them. A lot of our cleaners just do it. Like, unless they have to go like shop, like go to the store and shop, then, you know, they'll charge us some type of shopping fee, like 25 bucks or something. But a lot of times they'll just scoop it up on the way to the property and drop it off. And they won't even charge us. So, yeah, for sure. They are the lifeblood of the business when we're not around, you know, when we're managing from afar. So um, I know we've said this a lot. Cleaners, um, you know, they're doing a dirty job. They're cleaning <laughs> dirty properties. Um, so it's very important to keep them happy and, and pay them, compensate them well, um, you know, ask them, check in with them, like, hey, do you feel like you're paid properly? Or, you know, I know what we do is on most of our properties is, you know, if we get five star reviews on cleaning, uh, we'll bonus our cleaners uh, either. I think we're doing a hundred bucks now every month and they really appreciate that. Um, and that's in cash. Yeah. So we just kind of throw them, you know, some twenties here and there. And then if they do well each month, we'll bonus them on top of uh, what we already pay them. So um, very important, but anything else, Mike? Uh, I'll just throw in one bonus question, but this is more after you find the cleaners. So after they've been working for you for a while, check in with them and just say, hey, is there anything else I can do to make your life easier or to make your job easier for you, right? And that'll go a long way. Cause like I said, they're doing a very, very hard job. Like they're working hard. So anything that I can do to alleviate them. So like an example, one of our hotels, there's uh, three levels of stairs. So they're taking all the cleaning supplies, all the vacuums, everything from the basement all the way up to the third floor. Right. So they were like, it would be amazing if you could buy an extra vacuum and leave it in the closet in the third floor. Boom. Done. We spent the extra couple hundred bucks got a vacuum so that they don't have to lug that vacuum up and down three flights of stairs every single day, right? Like those little things, they're going to keep them happy. And yeah, it costs you a couple hundred bucks, but it would save me from having to build a whole new team of cleaners and keep them happy and keep them feeling appreciated. So asking that simple question, is there anything else that I can do or that we can do to make your life easier, to make this more seamless for you guys? Yep. <clears throat> and that's that, I mean, at least quarterly. Oh, 100 percent. And that I'm asking monthly, that one question honestly. right there. That question right there will save a lot of headaches um, on the back end. So that's a great bonus. And it'll air out a lot of dirty laundry, kind of no pun intended, that like you might not even know that they're having issues with. Like, oh, this dryer is driving me nuts. It's taking way too long. You don't know how long it's taking you to clean to do the laundry unless you're there or unless they complain. But 
if you proactively ask those questions, it's like, oh, well, I didn't realize that. Maybe we should outsource it. And I'll have a linen company come and pick it up or whatever, whatever situation comes up. Let's, let's get it out in the open. Let's handle it and let's keep it moving forward. I love it. All right. Again, everybody, you guys can get that list of questions that uh, Mr. Riley has put together. Just text resources to 978-242-0001. And again, we'll get you set up. We've got a brand new portal that's completely free, a whole bunch of resources, all different checklists. We've got our deal analyzer in there, a whole bunch of good stuff. So again, text resources to 978-242-0001, and we'll get you guys hooked up. And until next time, go out there. Keep taking action and we'll see you next week.